Somebody say, Good God Almighty. Say it again. I made it this far. Come on, let's put our hands together and praise God. I made it this far by the grace of God. Good God Almighty. Made it this far by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. I want to say Happy Father's Day Amen. to all of the fathers that are present and to those who may be watching us on the cable uh, television. Happy Father's Day. And to all of the mothers who've had to be fathers as well. Amen. 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 Wearing two hats. Mother's hat, they keep saying Happy Mother's Day, they for Father's Day, put on the Father's Day hat. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that I'm here in Jesus' name. And to all of the ministers that are here with me this morning, God bless you. Amen. To all of the ministers. And I wanted to say, I got a card in the mail yesterday from... Uh, the Elder Schofield and he wishes me a happy Father's Day so I want to wish you a happy Father's Day on TV Amen. Amen. and uh, it's good, it's good how pleasant it is for brothers to come together in unity Amen. am I right brother? Amen. that's what God wants us to do Amen Amen I thank God for all of this good singing. Good God Almighty. Amen. All this good singing. People come to Mount Zion, they say, well, when you, what, what happened to the paint on the wall? The, the choir sung it off. They sung the paint off the wall. Thank God Almighty. Now, I'm just teasing now. I'm just teasing. Don't go out here and say they sung the paint off the wall, show not. I thank God for this opportunity to just stand here in this holy place yes, one more time one more time one more time yes yeah, good to be able to come to church just one more time amen You to help me say that one more time, business. I can't, can't get the words right, but y'all know what it is. Yes. Mm. Is that the right key, friend? That's the right key, anyway. Mm. One more time.
from Luke 15. <clears throat> We're going to take a look at this particular person. Gospel of St. Luke, 15th chapter. We're going to begin with the 11th verse. And it reads like this. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Let the church say amen. amen. You may be seated. I'm going to talk a little bit about this father. Every family has its own makeup. And it has also its own flaws as well. Amen. It has its strengths on, and it has it, its weaknesses. Amen. So when we begin to talk about families or fathers, we have to examine what God says about it. Because there are some excellent points that are in this particular scripture. He says a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father. Father give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And he divided unto them his living. Number one. Purpose of the father is. That he gives. Out of his abundance. Amen. You can't give what you ain't got. Amen. You need to look at somebody and tell them that. You can't Amen. give Amen. what you ain't got. Amen. Why would he ask of his father if he knew his father didn't have anything? But he did ask. He did ask. And his father gave unto him. Now in the 13th verse, and not many days after the youngest son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Let's take a look at the father. This father has been a son. Amen. So oftentimes when young men are growing up, they look at father or look at parent. As if you have no idea what I'm going through. Go ahead. You think that just because you're having fear, that these parents have never had such a fear. You have to realize that they too have been your age. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. I was looking through some of the files back there in the pastor's study. And I saw a picture that I didn't realize was there. I think I put it there when we moved in here. And that was a picture of my dad, myself, and my son up there. <coughs> Nelson. Y'all call him magic. <laughs> three, three were standing there. And I looked at that picture. Well, I, had, I was much younger then. This is the damaged part. <laughs> what you looking at? <laughs> but when I was younger, I thought I looked pretty good. <laughs> Anybody in here can share a similar? Yes, sir. Come on. Amen. When you're younger, you know, you look in the mirror. The mirror don't lie. The mirror don't lie. It says, don't you look good? The mirror says, you sure do. <laughs> and so when we were standing there, we were all standing there together, I thought, Wow. And I, I, I saw how much I then looked like he looks now. Go ahead. 
And I'm thinking, I remember being a young man growing up in the household with my father. And I would think, he has no clue what it's like to be me. He has no idea. And sometimes I was thinking that, well, you know, he, my dad's a preacher. He, he has no idea that what it's like to have these thoughts come into your mind. Go ahead, go ahead, fix it. Your mind is a battleground. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Satan will run all kinds of things into your mind. Yes, Don't you know that all kinds of acts occur in your mind? Go ahead, go ahead. I wish I had some help in there. In your mind is the battlefield. And how you play it out is you have to have some good breaks. Because every thought that goes through your mind, you don't be walking down the street thinking about uh, songs in the National Baptist hymn book. You don't think about, you know, you know uh, walking close with Jesus. Because what will break up, you'll be singing a hymn, you know, I want to walk and talk with Jesus. The next thing you know, it'll switch over, you know. Just to be close to you. You know, and you have to reach and grab that hole. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. And if you're not careful, even when you're singing it, songs in the choir, you'll be singing something that the choir will be singing like you were this morning. Y'all sound good this morning. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, you over here with Luther Vandross or somebody. You have to watch your mind. Now, he wasted his substance with riotous living. You have, and I've, I've said this before, and I'm coming at you again with this because the Lord led me this way. You have to understand that there are friends that you have that are called uh, easy life friends. As long as your life is easy, you're going to have some friends. When you got some money in your pocket, you're going to have some friends. Amen. You, when you got, you know, a little joy going on, wheels to a car, access to other people that uh, have a lot of joy, even if it's, uh, you know, the joy that you pick up in a bottle or something, right. or some pills, that's joy. You got to understand that you're going to have some friends who have something. But then when you have nothing, yeah. your friends disappear. Amen. Amen. Your friends disappear. Amen. Now, he says that when he had spent all, you have been broke. you have been broke. He said, Lord, I ain't got nothing here. I ain't got nothing. He said, when he spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. Amen. So here he is now. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. I need to say something here. We have two parts in the Bible in the Old Testament. And it says this. That you are not to indulge or eat in the animal that has cloven hoof. That's a pig. That's a swine. Now over in the New Testament. Go ahead. You will find that one of God's called apostles, Peter, he was having a dream. Go ahead. And in the dream, God spoke to him and said, everything that I have cleaned is now ready to be eaten. I've cleaned it up. So, which one are we going to go by? Because there are some that say, well, we, you know, you shouldn't eat the swamp. You know, because it's in the Bible. Well, keep reading. Because there are a lot of things in the Bible. Because he was starting out with the people and he was teaching them some things. And as he taught them every generation, he began to free them up with some things. Jesus came from heaven Sent by his father. That's why we have three seats up here in most pulpits across the world. They represent the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, 
You have to understand that when God sent his son into the world so that he could free you from a lot of the things that held you captive so that his death would mean your life. His blood would pay your sin debt. So that you would no longer be in bondage and fear to the devil, to Satan, nor the powers that Satan has. I wish I... I'll have to do that another time if God give me one more chance. Because you can find it over in the Revelation, the book of the Revelation, that there are some evil spirits, demonic spirits, that can do miracles. Amen. I'll show it to you. See me after church. See me after church or I'll come back to church. Put it that way. Amen. God give me another chance. Amen. You never know. Every Sunday I preach, I say, Lord, let me say something today that uh, will sink in to somebody. Amen. <clears throat> now, and he says here, uh, he went into the fields to feed swine. Well, right away, he's at the worst place possible because he's knowing that in his culture, in his uh, whole community, he's not supposed to be even uh, around the swine. Now, here he is feeding them. And let's go a little further. And he said he went and joined himself, sent him into the fields to feed swine, and he would have filled his belly with the husk that the swine didn't eat. Husk, that's corn. Yeah. See, they, you know, to fatten up a pig, you have to give him plenty of corn. Mm -hmm. Don't you know? Now, sir, I'm talking to people that don't know anything about agriculture. Uh, I know these, these people, they don't know nothing about corn. Uh, you know, Sister Evelyn, they think you, the only kind of corn you get is out of a can at Kroger. Right. But you grow corn and then you feed it to the swine you, they, and they swell up. And, you know, from, from all that good corn. Now, here he is, he said he would have been eating the corn. That the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Nobody gave it to him. There was no welfare department. There was no check coming in the mail. I don't care how, you know, sick you were. I don't care how, whatever you were. No check is coming in the mail. And you go to the doctor, you got to have some cash, some moolah. Because they did not accept any kind of a card. That was sent by the welfare department. I think it's a different word they use it nowadays. Not welfare anymore. I don't know what it's called, but human services. Thank you. Now it says, when he came to himself, have you ever been thinking something that was just not like you? Yes. You sitting there thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. Somebody will say something and you snap up here. Oh, hey. and your mind was gone in that direction and it wasn't supposed to be going over there. Don't be sitting here looking at me like you never had that thought. Go ahead. And, and here we go. And he says, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough in despair and I perish with hunger? He's beginning to think about home. Amen. Fix it. Fix it. Home. Now he's gone through all this time. He spent a lot of time being away from home. What was his father thinking while he was gone? He was praying. God wants a father to be a praying man. Amen. You've got to learn how to lean on God. You can't chase these young people around. Man. You know, I, I could hear that car going by. You know, I knew what my daddy's car sounded like. They got some nice, big old, thick oak trees. You know, you step behind the oak tree like that while the car go by. <laughs> I ain't giving you no hints either, no. <clears throat> so, uh, you got to know... How it goes. You can't follow them around. You, you, you've called people. Now, have you seen this? Have you seen? You just have to let God keep them company. Amen. Amen. All right? Let's look at this. And it says, 
I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Amen. Now, oftentimes, nowadays, the old church would require you because the towns were small, the churches were small, everybody knew everybody's business, Amen. and they would require you to come forward Amen. and apologize to the church Amen. because you were a member of that church family. Amen. You were a member of a family. And so you come before your church family and say, I have sinned and done wrong. I have done something. Even if you don't want to give it a name, you got to say, I have done wrong. I've done wrong. And I want the church, my church family, to forgive me. I've come to myself. I've come to myself. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, you can walk down that aisle so many times, people will look at you and think, Lord, there he go again. Yeah. Lord, is there ever a time that some week he ain't go by, he ain't done something? He ought to come by. And a lot of times it stifles people and it stops them from being open and honest with God and with each other. Same thing happens in families. If you... Uh, was supposed to take the garbage out, brother. And, you know, the wife was gone. So you, so I'm going to take it out in a minute as soon as I get watching the fourth quarter of the basketball game. And then all of a sudden, here she comes back. She told you to take the garbage out before you left. And then here she comes back. And then you got to run and fall, hurt your hand, break your toe. You know, <laughs> trying to get the garbage out before she come in the house. See, it stops you from being open and honest. You know, well, honey, did you do? Well, well, well. And now you done told a big, fat, greasy lie. And, and, and now you've got something between you and her, it, and it shouldn't have been that way. Am I right? So it should be open and honest. Now, he says, I will arise and go to my father. Say, I have sinned against heaven. That's important. If you're going to realize that everybody that you can see sins. Oh, I need you to say that again. Everybody that you can't see, they sin too. There is no one that you know that sin does not creep in. That's why we have the blood of Jesus. But the only way you can be forgiven and have your sin debt paid, you got to openly confess it before God. You can't be forgiven if you never confess it. God already knows what you did. He knew you were going to do it before you did it. Ain't no secrets with God, but God's love is still coming to you. It's God's love that kept you right there where you are today. Amen. It's not because you earned it. You didn't deserve it. Not because you stood so tall and did so well. It was God's love. Amen. How can you measure his love? You can't measure his love. Amen. Can't measure his love at all because there is nothing that can measure God's love. Amen. Higher than any height. It's wider than any width. It's deeper than any ocean. It's it's, it's all consumed. Now, he said, I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Now, you've got something between you and God, and you say, I'm not worthy to be called your son. I've messed it up. Anybody ever been there? Amen. He said, I just messed it up. I messed it up good this time. <laughs> I've messed it up small ways before, but I, I've messed it up good this time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you can mess it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, sometimes I think we let me just go on. <laughs> and he said, make me as one of your hired servants. I want to be just like somebody. Now, there's a whole lot of people that will separate families. And I've told you this before. Blood does not necessarily make family. Blood does not necessarily make family. 
what makes family is the love. Did you hear me? Family comes from love. Because you can have a house with people in it and it still not be a home. See, I'm, I'm, I'm fighting back Luther right now. See? Get away, Luther. Get away. Leave me alone. Eyes is not alone. <laughs> See? There it goes. All right. He arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. See, that's a father. He's looking for a change. He's been praying all the time. But he was looking for some semblance of a change. And then one day while the father was looking, that's when he saw his son coming. The father was looking first. It's not important because everybody makes mistakes. It's not important how you start off in life. What's important is how you finish up. You got to know that there is a better way to be a better you.